this another very strange artifact holding a stick with a snake. Again, we have the snake here, and the question is where and who this statue was done. This is a photo of the Altiplano in Bolivia. Archaeologists and researchers found out that at least before 4,000 years there was happen a very big impact in Argentine and the shock wave of this big impact destroyed many stone buildings in the Altiplano of Bolivia. You have here a picture of Pumapunku, a very strange place close to Tiahuanaco in Bolivia, and you see tons of stone plates with perfect work on it, destroyed. Maybe this was the reaction to the big impact in Argentina. Here you have my friend Giancarlo Bonfanti, Italian researcher, in the center of the so-called Sun Gate in Diawanaco, in Bolivia. And some researchers write that the figurines on top of this side of the Sun Gate are showing the Venus calendar. Here you have one of the big stone plates from Pumapunco and you can see how perfect this stonework was done. And the question is, could you do such perfect work with simple tools? Close to this area, they found skeletons with a size of 2.6 meters. And the picture on the top shows you the skull of one of these skeletons and it looks like it is deformed but definitely these skulls are not deformed they are natural style like an egg on this photo you see how strong the jaw of those skulls were this is a front view and the most interesting photo is this one because you can see that the top of the skull does not have the three plates which we have as Homo sapiens and that shows us that these skeletons are not Homo sapiens. What we might be able is doing a DNA check and an age dating on these skeletons because we are very much wondering what kind of humans did exist long time ago and how long ago. On the next pictures I show you some artifacts found close by the real giants and when I first time got this mask in my hands I tried to look through the two eyes. At that time I didn't know that they were belonging to 2.6 meter skeletons and I was just wondering why did they make masks where you can only look out from one eye? But after knowing that those people were over 2.5 meters, I could imagine that their skull was, of course, bigger than our skull. And that's why these masks were for us oversized. That's another mask from Bolivia. Another one with very wonderful encarving many spirals and many symbols which we also found in many other cultures. This is a very heavy stone figurine and again here you can see on the top the head of a snake going down on his backside. This is the reverse side you can see again the snake. So that means the snake must have been a very, very important animal in the past of our history. Here you can see a stone flute. The strange thing is that the vibration of the sound of these stone flutes is exactly the same as our brain waves. So that means maybe those flutes were used for meditation or for healing purposes and each two holes are connected perfectly 
with each other. That means you can make perfect holes into this very, very hard stone, but how you connect with simple tools the two holes on the bottom, this would be even in our days a very difficult work to do. Because it's in the shape of a U and it curves around it is, inside the stone. That's right. And with simple tools, you are definitely not able to do such a work. And even the holes are very precise. This is the form of a boat and you have three flute pipes at the end. Here you can see how perfectly they were made. This is another flute, very small. You can use it only with very soft blowing and the sound is like the sound of the dolphins. This is an artifact where we do not have any idea for what purpose it was used. Now we are in Colombia. On the next few photos I show you very strange artifacts from Colombia in South America. The most famous industrial designer and architect in Colombia, Professor Jaime Gutierrez, is collecting strange artifacts from his country already since centuries. His most important piece is the so-called genetic disc. Here you can see a disc made out of lydite, a very hard stone. It's nearly the same hardness as granite, but the structure of lydite is like leaves. So it would be quite impossible to make the same disc in our days out of the same material. The diameter of this disc, we call it the genetic disc, is about 27 centimeters and on this disc you have several things presented which usually you can only see with a microscope. For example on the left side around 11 o'clock you can see one egg, human egg, without and another with spermia. On the right side at approximately one o'clock you can see some spermias and then you have several very strange presentations which we could not explain. But here on the left side you have a microscopic photo from the inside of a lady done by a Swedish photographer and you can see that the egg without and with spermia looks exactly like the presentation on this genetic disc. On the reverse side, you have on top several presentations of fetus in different size, different age, ending up with uh, looks like a little child. You see also at the end of the plate around six o'clock, female and male, and also on the right side around nine o'clock, you can see the presentation of men woman and child, but the strange thing is how they present those human-like heads. Here you can see a knife done by the same material, lydite. On top of the knife, on the handle, you have mother's head, beyond you have the child's head, and the umbilical cord is going around the neck of the child. So that means this knife would have been used to cut the umbilical cord, saving the child's life. This is a close-up mother, child and umbilical cord. This is an instrument. It might have been used for helping the child coming out, leaving the mother, when there were some complications and it is also made out of the same material, lydite. You have here the vagina and the child's head coming out. And on the reverse side, you can put only your thumb inside. That means you can only use this instrument with your fingers. 
meaning meaning you cannot use power so that means it might be safer helping the child leaving the mother than our instruments we are using in our days because sometimes the modern instruments while being used can damage the child's head this we think is a medical instrument it is also ludite and it's a perfect form another one and these are other ones they are very much smaller than shown on this photo and when we did material check in vienna the most expert worldwide checked those pieces first of all the material each one is done with ludite and the form itself he checked them and finally he said i cannot tell you how they were done who did they make but the only thing i can definitely tell you from the same material in our days we cannot make the same instruments so how old they are we do not know but as they were found in colombia and they do not fit any existing pre-columbian culture we must consider that those artifacts are at least older than 6000 years but we cannot explain what kind of technology they did use to be able to make such instruments and such tools made with ludite you can see each piece fits exactly every kind of hand never mind how big the size of the hand was each instrument each tool fits exactly each hand which was using those instruments this face looks a little bit like the maui the big stone statues from easter island here you have a close up this in joking i call it the dentist chair perfectly done but again same material ludite and the strange question is why if they could make such perfect figurines out of this very difficult material why did they show the human face always with big round eyes and a little nose and a big mouth there is no real explanation possible this is again one piece from colombia ludite on the front side you see the mother holding the baby and on the back side you see the man with armors most probably for hunting this stone figurine was found in colombia it looks exactly like the maui statues from easter islands but it is only about 30 cm in size this is another masterpiece of stone work you have on both sides presented one bird but if you look at the front side you can see that the two birds presenting a face and on the left side between the bird's head and the wings you see again this unknown writing which we found on stones from all over the world this is the mother holding a child very strange face and it's a kind of jade material this is another stone from colombia showing an armadillo on top of the armadillo you can see a strange face with long ear and two horns on top on this artifact you can see a smiling face on top you have two triangles on this side and on the other side on the right side you have a face again the animal face on the right side and some unknown symbols and on the bottom of this object you see an animal looks like a crocodile now we are moving to guinea west africa very close to the border with mali they found on a huge 
granite mountain, the half portrait of a lady done in granite stone, and the size of this statue from top of the head until the middle of the torso is exactly 150 meters. So this is a real big question. Who might have been able to do such a huge granite half portrait in a mountain at least 10 to 12,000 years ago because the Italian geologist Professor Pitoni was on the spot, he did these photos and he checked the earth on the bottom of this mountain and his calculation was that this stone monument must have been done at least 10 to 12,000 years ago. But then we have the real big question, who could have been able to do such a big stone monument? Even in our days, it would be impossible, or at least it would cost so much money that it would never be able to do. And if you look at the close-up of the face, some experts told me that this face definitely is not European, but also, of course, not black African. It must be either South American or Asian culture. But then again, we are at the point 10 to 12,000 years ago. It might be the civilization, the lost civilization from Atlantis. Close to this area in Sierra Leone, Professor Pitoni was in charge of diamond excavations. And as he heard in this area a legend about Allah was angry with some angels and he put them into stone and throw them to the earth, he put the sky also made it into stone and throw it to the earth and he put the stars and threw them to the earth. The legion says that the sky, you can see on this stone, they call them sky stones, sky blue stones found in this area under the earth. And we did research in Vienna. This is definitely artificial stone. It's not a natural stone and all the material could be found, but the only thing they could not inform us is what kind of color did they use to get this real sky blue color. The stone figurines found from 20 meters down to even 50 meters. Professor Pitoni always took some organic material from the finding place and the age dating of those stone artifacts are from 2,500 years up to the oldest one, 17 thousand years. Here you have a granite stone, so-called nomoli, stone nomoli, with very nice encarving. Here you have a man sitting on an elephant, as there are also the legions of giants all over Africa. You know how big is an elephant. It's a wonderful stonework. It's very hard and very heavy. There are also some artifacts showing half human or human with the head of a reptile holding a kind of pot in their hand and they could put something inside this pot and also on top of several nomolis there is a hole for putting something inside and most probably they were used for ceremonies. Here you have a kind of animal, it looks like a dinosaur and when Professor Pitoni found this statue it was making a strange noise so he opened the statue and they found inside the small black ball you can see on the bottom of the statue and this was iron material. When we did the research on this artifact and especially on this metal ball, next morning the professor called me and told me that somebody must have done a bad joke to me. I asked why? Because the result of the research was this metal material is chrome steel 
and chrome steel was found found first time at the beginning of the 20th century in Austria. That means it was impossible inside a statue with the age of approximately 17,000 years. But when I called immediately Professor Pitoni, he was laughing and he said, I'm a geologist. If a statue is making a strange sound, I do not open it just right away, but I did several X-rays and you can see here on the right picture one of the X-ray photos and you see that inside the closed statue already the round ball, the chrome steel ball, was existing. On this X-ray photo you can see exactly and also Professor Pitoni saw that this statue in former days already was opened but perfectly closed again and he called a specialist who opened it exactly concerning this photo, the small stone ball which was closing the whole inside and you can see that the metal ball was already existing. Some of you might have watched several pictures, photos on the internet of giants, giant skeletons found in desert, in India, in China and other places. Most of those photos were competition photos to present Photoshop. Perfectly done. I also was quite impressed when I received first time one of those photos. But these photos I'm showing you now, they are definitely not coming out from a Photoshop competition. These photos are real skulls and skeletons. This skull was found in a tunnel system underground in Colombia. The skull is dated up to 11,000 years. The skull is bigger than normal skull and the front teeth of the jaw are lined up in a different way than our teeth. Something that occurs to me here is that there's a very strong pronounced jaw, it's a very prominent jawline, very prominent chin. And here you see a photograph that was shown to us by a Project Camelot insider. Now this isn't a real photograph, this is a scene from the old Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Conan the Barbarian. And what you're seeing here is a special effect on the actor James Earl Jones. The critical thing here is the shape of the jawline. Our witness, who had spent time with the Anunnaki in real time, in the present day, said that one of the things that characterizes them, besides their size, which he says was eight or nine feet tall, he said they're very large and they're very strong and they look larger than that, but that's around about their height, which matches exactly the 2.6 meters that Klaus has been talking about. He said this is a very prominent, strong jawline, and... This is what strikes me about these skeletons, these skulls here that we're looking at right now. Didn't know. No, you need to know this. Back to class. So once again, here you have a very old photo done in a museum in La Valletta in Malta. And it shows several long skulls. And the explanation is deformed skulls, but they are very long going to the back. This is one of several very, very strange skulls. They are presented in a small museum in Ica, in Peru. Ica is located close to the famous Nazca lines, and the museum is called Museo Maria Reiche. The German lady who was researching her whole life about the Nazca lines and in this museum you can see the most strange skulls I ever saw, all found in this area close to the Nazca lines. So the question is, what kind of humans were living there and how did they get those skull forms? And especially this one, definitely several doctors and experts told me it would not be possible to create such a kind of deformation because 
Through deformation, you do not get the double bone material on the skull and on this skull. Even you have particles of the skin and hairs. And I think it would not be difficult to do a age dating and especially a DNA analysis of this skull. On this picture, I show you some legendary skeleton forms of giants. In the year of 1964, in the south of Ecuador, in the province Loja, there broke down a part of a mountain platform and Father Carlos Vaca, who was working as a priest in hospitals, he was called to this place and he found the broken bones of a giant. Good. Well, Klaus, I asked you if you would take us on a journey and for the last nearly an hour I think it is you've taken us on a fascinating journey not only around the world but through time back as long ago as 17,000 years and it's a real reminder of how little we know about what our history really is these are important pieces of an important puzzle and you're doing an enormous amount to raise people's awareness of what it is that we're not shown in many museums, what it is that we don't read in anthropological textbooks, and what it is that many university professors still refuse to recognize. And thank you so much for your part in helping to raise our own understanding of our history on planet Earth. Klaus, thank you. <laughs>